Can I be with one partner? Yes, you can. Can I love my partner? Yes, you can. Can I be loved with my partner? Yes, you can. But first, discover it inside yourself. Turn your attention inwards. The more your mind is quiet, the more you feel the love which is here. It's immersed love. It's tremendous. It's beyond the romantic love. Romantic love is beautiful, it's amazing, but it's conditional. It's not unconditional. It's conditional. It's what do you do for me and what do I do for you? So you're in with your partner, you're totally in love with them, and then another person shows up, they're attractive, and you start flirting with them, the energy shifts, and you're attracted to them, and you want to feel them and check them out or whatever, and then your partner is going to be very angry and very upset. And if you go and bed this person and sleep with them, then your partner hates you. The romantic love, there's a thin line, like a hairline, in between love and hate. It can flip from love to hate in a moment, or from hate to love, because it's conditional. The only love in this planet, in the third dimension, which is real, and it is unconditional, is the love of the guru, the love of the yani. If you come across the yani and the master and you're surrendered, that love is unconditional between you and a true awakened master. That love affair is absolutely unconditional because the awakened master doesn't care. It's his hair love for you is unconditional. Any other love is conditional. Your mother, the mother and child love is very close to the guru and the disciple love, but it's still conditional. It's still the love of mom with the child has conditions in it. It's not 100% unconditional. Maybe in a few, few first years that the child is helpless and completely dependent it's unconditional, but it shifts. As the child starts to form its own personality and becomes its own person, then that love changes and becomes conditional. Because it's still, if they misbehave and they don't do what you want them to do, then you can abandon them. But the true love in human, in this dimension, the only one which is absolutely unconditional is the love of the Guru. The love affair between the Guru and the disciple. From the Guru to the disciple. That's an unconditional love. Or you find it inside yourself and you recognize that you're the source of it. So as you become aware, I want you to just take your time after today, take the time, think about it, sit with this. Don't process, process it, let it get processed and just kind of sit with it and see what is Zarathustra talking about. Does it make sense or not? Find it for yourself. And don't just follow what I say blindly and just replace one idea with another idea. So it's a very good concept. What you're saying is great. And I'm going to replace it with what I learned from my other teacher. No, don't do that, please. Don't replace this with something else. Dive into it. Find it for yourself. I'm giving the clue and I'm showing you the direction. But walk that path. 
then it's of value because you need to find this out on your own. If you don't find it out on your own, it has no value. Look at how we are conditioned to project our love and acceptance on the utter world, on the objects. And look how the media, television, movie industry is all based on supporting this illusion. It is an illusion, it's not real. And just because 7 billion people follow it, it's still not real. The truth is the truth. It shines on its own light. It doesn't matter how many people follow it or not. That doesn't make it real. This is real. And then, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Projecting your happiness on other people. How many people do you know or how many times you have been with someone and you're trying to change them? Oh, he's a really nice man, but he drinks a little bit too much. Or he's a really nice man, but he's not very caring. He's a little nice man, but he's a little bit violent. He's got a sharp tongue. And I'm hoping, I know if I get married to him, that will change. Or he's a really nice man, but he's a cigarette smoker. And I'm hoping it will change. So now you're trying to change someone to fit your image. Or maybe if we have a baby together, things change. And we'll be happy. So now you're projecting your happiness based on someone changing. If they change, you will be happy. That's another thing. Now this one. Check this one out. Of us projecting into the future that when I find my way, when I find my man, when I make enough money, when I get my degree, when I buy my house, when I move to Hawaii, I'll be happy. Projecting your happiness into the future, projecting it on an object, another time. These are all parts of, major parts of our conditioning. You're wondering why you're not happy as you are right now is, you know, because you're doomed. You're doomed to project it on another time, on another person, on an object. Because that's what you've been taught from childhood. This is what you've been shown from childhood. Now, another part. You ready for more or it was too much? Can you handle a little bit more? Okay. So why is it that you meet someone and you feel this incredible connection and you don't feel it for everybody? Why is it that one person pulls this trigger inside you that love explodes? 